Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthspan. In this newsletter, we will look at a couple of papers on the beneficial effects of NMN. One of a trial which is using a vaccine against senescent cells. And Ms. Tanaka of Japan, the oldest living person, recently had a birthday. First, a disclaimer that in this newsletter, we are sharing some news items and recent papers that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. First, we would like to give a shout out to our supporters who are very generous to buy us some coffee. It encourages us to continue to share information on ageing research. Thank you so much for your support. This story came to our attention from a tweet by Dr. Sinclair, who thought it was a big deal. He was referring to this paper that was published by a team in Japan. Senolytic vaccination improves normal and pathological age-related phenotypes and increases lifespan in progeroid mice. So as Dr. Sinclair said, the study was in rapidly aging mice, but it is an interesting proof of concept. We have seen that removing senescent cells, either genetically or with senolytics, has been shown to improve the health of aging mice. Apoptosis is the process of programmed cell death. Senescent cells have a way of disabling this process in themselves, which is how they continue to survive while secreting SASP into their environment. Senolytic molecules work by inhibiting the anti-apoptotic pathway that senescent cells are using. So this could have off-target effects where anti-apoptotic activity in viable cells is also inhibited. So the researchers are looking for an alternative approach to removing senescent cells. They identified glycoprotein non-metastatic melanoma protein B, GPNMB, as a transmembrane molecule present on senescent cells. Its presence was upregulated in patients and mice with atherosclerosis. Removing GPNMB positive cells genetically did show an improvement in senescence in fat tissue and improved the health of mice in a couple of disease models. The way that vaccines work is by priming your immune system to recognize and remove specific proteins. In this case, they immunize the mice against GPNMB so that the immune system attacked the senescent cells. This process was shown to reduce GPNMB positive cells and extend the lifespan of the mice. Showing that vaccination targeting senoantigens could be a potential strategy for senolytic therapy. A couple of cautions would be that different senescent cell types have different markers. In this paper, they looked at vascular endothelial cells. And senescent cells do serve a purpose, particularly in wound healing. Would this be too effective and continue to clean up senescent cells? Taking senolytics may be more controllable. This approach has some really good points in that it is specific to the type of cell and can be an infrequent or even one-time only treatment as once primed, the immune system would continue to remove the cells. In this paper, a team from Japan showed that NMN dosing of cells in vitro increased the amount of mitochondrial DNA. Our mitochondria have their own DNA, mtDNA. Counting the amount of the mtDNA in a cell is a reasonable proxy for the mitochondrial health and function. For the study, the team developed a new mechanism for analysing the mtDNA and counting the number of copies in the cell. Using this methodology, they looked for specific metabolites associated with the activation of mtDNA replication, which they did by overexpressing a protein called twinkle. They found nucleotides and NAD plus levels were prominently altered. They then found that the treatment with NMN had a similar effect showing increased mtDNA replication. The conclusion is that NMN acts to support mtDNA replication. mtDNA copy number, the number of copies of mtDNA in a cell, is a proxy for mitochondrial function, and lower numbers are associated with age-related diseases. A preliminary investigation, but it would be good if NMN does indeed increase mitochondrial DNA. In this paper, they looked at the impact of long-term administration of NMN on age-related diminished ovary reserve. As women get older, the quality and quantity of eggs in the ovary decreases, which is related to mitochondrial dysfunction. 
As women in developed countries choose to delay having children, maintaining fertility is worth investigating. In the study, they gave 40-week-old mice NMN for 20 weeks against a control group. They found that the NMN did have anti-inflammatory effects on the organs and improved the estrus cycle. The follicle is the structure in which the egg develops before being released. We can see on this graph that the number of these follicles decreases over time from 4 weeks to 60 weeks. At 60 weeks, the control has a very low number left. While the mice that were given NMN have approximately as many as when they were 12 or 24 weeks old. In part of the investigation of the mechanism, they looked at P16 as a marker of senescence. Over time, there is an increase in senescence in the ovaries until week 60. Whereas those treated with NMN had much reduced levels of P16, showing a reduced level of senescence. On January the 7th at the Maryland Medical Center, for the first time, a heart from a pig was transplanted into a human. The patient is doing well. For this to work, the pig needed to be genetically modified to avoid rejection, as Professor Church discussed in his interview with us. The procedure has not been generally approved by the FDA yet, but in this case there was no alternative, so they agreed. It's early days and they say that much more research needs to be done, but it is an amazing step forward and shows that the procedure is possible, not to mention saving the patient's life. Ms. Kane Tanaka, currently the world's oldest living person, recently celebrated her 119th birthday. She was born on January the 2nd, 1903. So far, the world's oldest recorded person is Ms. Jean Carmont from France, who lived to 122 years and 164 days. We wish Ms. Tanaka good health and hope that she is able to break the 123-year-old record for human lifespan and also earn the one million prize offered by Dmitry Kaminsky. We would like to thank everyone who has supported us by buying us a coffee. Recently, Buy Me A Coffee changed their payment system from PayPal to credit card Apple Pay and Google Pay. As well as buying us a coffee, you can also join our monthly membership to continue to support our channel to provide longevity content. You can find the link in the description. And we would like to let you know that we are also releasing some of our interviews as podcasts. These are our earlier interviews. They are available on most podcast platforms. Just search for Modern Healthspan. Thank you.